I meant to shoot this video at school. Then I thought I was gonna shoot it at home. Then I realized I forgot a lot of my stuff at school. So I'm gonna shoot it on my phone because I'm really, well, check this out. Orion. So I'm sitting in a meeting yesterday uh, at school and I, I'm hit with this idea for a video that I wanna share with y'all because I think that this will bring incredible value to you as soon as you go back into school after this weekend or tomorrow, like I'm not really sure when you're watching this, but like Im immediately, it will have an immediate impact in the best way possible when you go back to school. But right now, the wife's cooking in, in the kitchen, the kids are watching Phineas and Ferb, so I'm trying to like, I hope none of that kind of comes through, but, but, but check this out. And we're just in the dining room. Looks like a live feed's going on right now. I'm thinking about this idea of, I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions. So this showed up on my Facebook group, uh, Real Rap with Reynolds Teacher Talk. And then I get this DM a lot and I get this email a lot. Like, what do I do when the school doesn't support me? What do I do when the systems that are in place aren't working? What do I do? when the cell phone policy is out of whack, when the uniform policy is out of whack, when kids want to go to the bathroom all the time and the bathroom policy doesn't work, when, you know, like when essentially what we're hoping for is that the school system or the policy, which is innately broken, doesn't work, what do I do now? And I struggle, I struggle to answer this question because I, because I don't think people often want my answer because not all of us are the same, right? I think my, my answers work. They, they work for me. I've been surviving on this idea for years, but what does that mean for everyone else? And so I said this in a recent video and I wanna say it again. I want to literally tackle some of the biggest issues that I hear in meetings and in emails all the time right here. But what I'm going to ask you to do is not just look at the specifics of what I'm saying, maybe my specific answers work for you. For many of you, they may not, but can you get down with the spirit of what I'm saying and not just exactly the, the, the nitty gritty of what I'm saying? I really just said nitty gritty. I said nitty gritty. All right, so we're gonna move past that. So let me, let me break it down for you like this. In our school, if a student has a cell phone, which they should not have, right? There's a new policy this year and I'm not going to get into whether or not I like that policy or whether I think it's good or bad, because that's that's a whole different conversation. And I have zero interest in in like railing against my school or what I believe or what I don't believe. Like that's that's not interesting to me. And that, that's not what this channel is here for. This channel is here to help to empower teachers and not for me to complain about school systems just to complain about it. Anyway, our policy as a school is students should not have cell phones. Students need to put their cell phones in their locker when they come in every single day. That is what should happen. Now, if you come to school and you go to my class and you have your cell phone or a smartwatch or, or something along those lines, I am supposed to ask you to go put it in your locker. The expectation then is student goes into the hallway, one of our uh, security guard, it's like security guard, but it's not like, they're just like guys that help out in the hallway and stuff. Take those students, they go to their locker with them and ensure that their cell phone or their device goes into their locker and then they return to class. Now in reality, what that looks like oftentimes is a lot of students with cell phones, a lot of students leaving class, security guards being busy doing other things that, that they are, are necessary, like they're helping in different areas so they're not always out there. Students taking too long in the hallway, students missing a lot of class when they come back, and oftentimes they didn't really go and do the thing that you asked them to do anyway. So how do you navigate that? Do you complain to the principal? Do you complain to the superintendent? Do you play, do you complain to the, to the dean or to the security team? Or like, what are you supposed to do with that when that system, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes people are out there. Sometimes the kid does put it in their locker. Like sometimes these things happen, but what happens when they don't? Because then I'm supposed to write up the fact that someone had their phone out. I'm supposed to call home and let the parents know or email them and let them know. And that all just takes a long time to deal with. So now I'm spending more time dealing with cell phone issues than I am actually educating children in class. And the one kid that I sent out ends up taking up too much time and getting us off task and they're walking in and out of class and then they have to show back up and it's a big, it's, it's a thing, right? 
How do you get around the thing? I would like to suggest that you maybe think about not using the system, right? I'm not saying rail against whatever your school is doing, but what if you figured out a different way to deal with some of these things? So what that looks like in my classroom is this. I might go over to a student. I see that they have their phone, they have it under their desk, they do the uncomfortable thing where they look like this and they're looking at their phone and it's like, dude, no one ever looks like this unless, you know, I don't know, they, well, they don't, they, no one looks like that. If they're doing that, I say, look, here's the issue that I have. Let's, let's be honest real quick. You're on your cell phone a lot. And the problem with you being on your cell phone a lot is that it's a distraction. And when you're distracted, you're not getting the content and it's affecting your grades. And I am here not to police your cell phone. I don't care if you're on your cell phone, right? Like, honestly, like I really don't care, but you're not doing well and you're not engaged in the class. And so what I want you to do is do well. What I want you to do is live out all of your dreams that you have in the future. So I need you to put the cell phone away because that, because I'm, I'm noticing like there's this addictive quality to it. So look at it at lunch or whatever. Like it's, you know, just put it away. Cool. Or if I hear someone's cell phone go off, I don't stop the class and go, who cell, who had their cell phone? I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And that's something like I used to do, but now it becomes, yo, whoever's phone that is, can you just take a moment and put it away? Just like turn it off in your pocket. It's not a big deal. Put the, like hit the little moon thing and we'll just move on. And you just don't make a big deal out of it. Or if I see a cell phone, I might like look at someone and go, do you really have your cell phone out? Or I'll say things like, and look, some of the things I say, I do not recommend people do. Like, like I don't know your students. I don't know your connection with your students. This isn't a, like Reynolds said, do this. And then I'm going to go do this. But I will I'll say things to kids because I have relationships with them because I know who they are because I know their parents and I know who I can say what to. I will say, bro, is your, is your phone out? Do we already have a talk about this? Is your phone out again? Here's what's going to happen next. I see your phone out again, I'm gonna lick my finger, I'm gonna wipe it on your phone. And it's, look, it's so dumb. It is so dumb that I say this. It is always met with like, someone goes, oh, and they put their phone away. It's never like an aggressive thing. It's never someone like comes at me. It's never someone gets mad at me. Like students never get pissed off and go, well, oh, I wanna tell my mom or like, just try it. Or I'll bet you don't come over here and do that. It just never happens. That stuff never happens. Oh, we're, oh this is, this is real living right here. It's that kind of thing where you just take, instead of going the route that's prescribed, you just go a little left of center. So here's how I do this with a lot of things. Bathroom. I'm sorry. It's real. Everyone wants to go to the bathroom all the time. I have a whole nother video about this, about how I handle going to the bathroom that no one watches to the end really and then kids, people watch it and they just get really aggravated because they think I'm an idiot. But my, my two quick things are, I use the magic eight ball because it's silly, because I know my students, because no one's ever gonna, I'm never gonna make someone have an accent. If I know the same dude every single day wants to go out because I know that same dude can't read and he's trying to get out of reading um, or writing or taking the test or whatever, I just have him shake a magic eight ball and it's super simple. Or I go, can you do me a favor and just wait five minutes or like two minutes, ask me in two minutes, I wanna get through what I'm saying or have you copy down the rest of this, is that cool? They say yes, we get into it, they forget. And it happens all the time. I don't have to have a bathroom policy. I don't have to say it, you only go in the first five minutes or the last five minutes, or you can only go during this certain time. That All those things work, but what it's about is leaning into who you are, right? Let me say that again. It is about leaning into who you are and what works for you. There is no one size fits all model in education that works for everyone. There are no silver bullets in education. And that's so important. And it's really liberating because then you don't have to feel like the school model or, or the, the model that you were taught in college is the only way. There's all these different kind of like workarounds to get through things. So in our school, it's all boys. Their kids are always touching one another, which always leads to kind of like play fighting, which sometimes leads to real fighting. So how do we get around kids walking down the hallways and putting their hands on one another? We could write it up. We could put it on the checklist. We could give them a detention. We could email the dean. We could tell their parents. We could call home. We could do a whole lot of things that, you know, definitely create like a paper trail. But sometimes, and you know who your students are, you know who your high flyers are. Sometimes it's just nonsense. It's just boys kind of being boys. It's just adolescents or kids being kids, right? And so I, and I teach at all boys school, so I realize I'm being gender exclusive here. But that's just my experience and 
I forget sometimes. The idea is that it works a whole lot better when I take my cell phone and I see someone fighting and everyone knows I have a YouTube channel. So if I go, oh, is there a fight? Hold on real quick. And then I put my phone on record and I just hold it up and I go, here it is. Oh, oh, we, oh we're done fighting. Like I, all, I do this all the time where I pretend I'm going to record and I say, guys, violence gets a lot of views on YouTube. So like, if you're gonna fight, like just hold on just two seconds, let me just get set up. And then I want like still do it full on, but I just want to make sure I record it. And again, it's so ridiculous that it like breaks the moment. And most kids are looking for an out. If there's really some kind of beef, like it looks, it gives kids an out. It gives everyone a chance to just kind of laugh at it. Or I say, Miss Cho, who's our grade, who's our, uh, Ms. Cho, who's our Dean friend of mine, she's been on the channel before. I'll say, oh, are you guys doing this? I'm gonna FaceTime Cho. When you do that, it changes the situation. And as now that I'm thinking about it, there was a moment a few months ago, two kids were play fighting in the hallway and I started recording them and this is what happened. Ah, wait, it's like wait, two teddy bears. Ah, wait, wait. Right, it's the best. They weren't being bad. They weren't doing something wrong necessarily, but play fighting leads to other things, leads to someone tripping and getting hurt. And it's just, that's not the vibe you want in your hallway, right? So that is one way to get around that. Another way is if kids aren't moving in the hallway they need they, the way they need to, or they are taking too long, or they're causing a traffic jam, I tell kids the floor is lava all the time. I do this constantly. I go, guys, just so you know, um, it's Monday means the floor is lava and the way our hallways are set up is that it's all white tiles and on the side there's blue tiles and I say you have to you have to stay on the blue or your feet are going to catch on fire and when I tell you that 95 to 99 percent of the students comply to that they actually will only walk on the blue tiles because they play along with the floor is lava to the point where other teachers go what are they doing I go dude I got them to stay like on the right side of the hallway they're moving to class. There's no stopping because now you're blocking the flow of traffic completely, but you will have 50 kids at any given time like walking on blue tiles because they think the floor is actually lava. Or I tell kids like that are walking really slow to class instead of saying, hey man, I need you to hurry up. Come on, you guys are gonna be late. You're doing this again. Why do we have to do this every day? You take so long to get to class. They already know. They've already heard that from 10 other teachers in the hallway but instead literally see someone who's walking slower than molasses in the winter. And I go, whoa, what are we doing? Guys, you gotta slow down. Can't be running around the hallways like this. And again, it is the opposite. It's super dumb. And you just kind of made it like a little bit fun in the hallway. And so I will often have kids slow down even more or they're just like, oh my gosh, Reynolds. And they want to get by me. So they just hurry up. Or I have a microphone like, uh, like this and I have these microphones and I have a whole bunch of them in my room and I will interview kids and say, here they are, here he's coming right now. Um, real quick, sir, can we get a word with you? What's it like to be late to class every single day? And then you like interview them as they're going by, nobody wants to be interviewed or it's really funny, you acknowledge it. So you're acknowledging the fact that they're late. You're acknowledging the fact that they're missing class. You're acknowledging all of these things but instead of saying, you're gonna be late to class, hurry up the same old, same old, you're like, here they are right now, and you are interviewing them, and it becomes hilarious. And this also goes into creating a more positive vibe in the hallway, so kids actually want to walk by you, they want to interact with you, because this also doubles as a bubble blower. And who doesn't love bubbles in the hallway, or anywhere for that matter? As a matter of fact, I'll tell you who doesn't enjoy bubbles. High school kids don't enjoy bubbles. They get mad at them at first and they think that's dumb and that you're treating them like a little kid, but you walk through bubbles enough times and you try and pop a few of them and then it becomes a competition and then someone tries to eat them and then that's gross. It's a super fun activity to do in the hallway that just changes the vibe of the hallway. Other ways to change vibes in the hallway. I have a megaphone and I keep it at school. I bought it at Kohl's for $8 one year during Christmas, and it's awesome. Today, as we were leaving the school, there's probably, I don't know, 60 to 80 kids in the hallway at any given time leaving the school. And I'm always standing at this and the exit of the school every single day 
to just say goodbye to kids, to make fun of them, to have talks with them and just like have them leaving on a good foot. I will blow bubbles out there and do any number of other very bizarre things that just kind of like set this positive energy in place in the hallway. Today, my friend Cho is walking down the hallway and I know Cho has had a trying week, right? And this is like, this could be for any teacher. Cho's walking down and on the megaphone I announce, gentlemen, I need your attention. Would everyone please give a warm round of applause to Miss Cho? And that 80 kids start clapping and Cho is immediately like, she can't not smile at that, right? She has to smile at that. There's no alternative to this. And that just made it hilarious. It was so ridiculous. And I also use the megaphone to tell kids to slow down, to tell kids to speed up, to tell kids any number of things in the hallway, to say goodbye to the real quiet kids that are leaving that I have a connection with. I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, but I'll be like, yo, so-and-so, I want you to have a really great day. All right, hey you, have a great day. Or like nice jacket or nice shoes, or I tease my kids all the time because they have to wear uniforms. And when they walk down the hallway together, I say, hey, it's, I think it's cute you guys dress the same today. It looks like, it's it's cool, it's a good look. And they're always just like, so ridiculous. Like the, I get, I get this, that's the look I get the most is, What's wrong with you? You're so ridiculous. Another thing that I do in the hallway and in class, I use these hands on a stick. It's a very long hand. It's three feet long, it's a giant hand on a stick, and these are great for high fives in the hallway. They are good for fake karate chops. They are good for kids that try and throw paper balls across your room, whack them in there. Or I'll just say, you wanna throw that out? Don't come up here. Let me see if I can get it in the trash can. Go ahead, throw it, but lob it up to me and I'm gonna try and whack it in there. No, I'll get, you'll get the assist. It's good for collecting papers. So when kids have papers in the aisle and I don't wanna walk all the way down there, I will collect tests like this and stuff like that. It's just good for like a hundred different things. And in the hallway, it's just funny. Like you don't see that kind of madness all the time. And that's it, like that's it's that simple. Hands on a stick are also available now for sale. You can just email us at realrapwithreynolds at gmail.com and we will send you prices and availability. So uniforms, we have to, we wear uniforms at our school, right? And so the students have to wear like a tie and a dress shirt and the blazer, you've seen them in the videos before, dress pants and certain shoes and socks. One of the issues we see all the time is students that have their shirts untucked or their ties are undone or their jackets are ripped or they're not on right or they forget the jacket or whatever, right? There's always any host of issues because anything kids have to do, right? If, when they have no power, they just are gonna make it look the way they sort of want to make it look and it becomes an issue. People get really upset about this and again, I'm not here to talk about whether or not I believe in uniforms or don't believe in uniforms or whether I think people should get upset about it. People deal with things in the way that they want to deal. I think it's fun though to approach this in a slightly different way. So instead of making you stop, writing it up, having a big conversation about it, calling home, all of the things that could be done based on like what your school thinks is important, I will see a kid with their shirt untucked walking down the hallway. And instead of letting them just go or saying, Bro, how many times I gotta tell you about tucking in your shirt? You gotta tuck in the shirt. Guys, stop right there, tuck in the shirt. And then it becomes this sort of power struggle. I stop and I go, bro, look, real quick. I'm so glad I caught you because it appears that you accidentally, instead of tucking your shirt into your pants, you've tucked your pants into your shirt. And I just, I don't want you to go to class being embarrassed. So like, fix it real quick because I, I, I don't want that on my conscience. You know what I mean? It works, it's, again, it's so dumb that it makes kids stop and think about like what they're doing and then they actually tuck the shirt in. Or I go, if their tie's undone, I go, come here, let me, let dad help you. And then I just fix their tie for them. Or I go, look, you look so handsome down today. Like I act like, this is like, I'm thinking of like what my grandmother would say, like fix your tie, you look so handsome now. And again, it's just these silly things that you're still correcting the problem, you're still dealing with things, but you're doing it in a way that is a little bit playful, that's not so serious, that you're not making a big deal out of it. Little things, kids walking around with AirPods in. I tell them, I see that AirPod and I wanna swallow it. Let me get that. And then they immediately pull it out of their ear and they put it in their, what's wrong with you? I'm like, no, 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 it's like, I heard they're really good. 
And it's just like dumb stuff that you say to kids. Kids that talk too much in class, right? Students that are constantly seeking attention. I think instead of putting them in the back of the class, making them sit in the corner, like kicking them out, give them attention. So I have a student this year who is really funny, but doesn't always know how to turn it off, right? So his name's Daniel and we call him Daniel Tiger because I don't know, because Daniel Tiger. But Daniel Tiger is actually very, very funny. So instead of me trying to navigate that space, right, with a kid who's like trying to come into his own and figure out who he is, I don't doubt in him or, or fault him for this at, at all. Every day, he is the last journal entry. If we're talking about journal entries, he's the last journal entry of the day. And we call it story time with Daniel Tiger. And I play music behind it every day. And he gets up in front of the class and he reads. And sometimes when he reads, I'll get the students to like, we'll put a spotlight on him or we'll all turn our flashlights on. And I'll have four flashlights around him pointed up to his face with all the lights off, with music on in the background. It literally takes zero extra time away from what we were doing, right? So this isn't like I'm pushing off the lesson so we can give this kid a spotlight, but it's a way that we end journal entry time every day. It's a way that we transition into what we're doing. You're spotlighting a kid that wants spotlight. You're making something fun in class because school basically sucks every day. And so you're making something that's like a little bit more fun, a little bit more energetic. And you're giving a kid what they, not just what they want, you're giving a kid what they need by letting them have a little bit of shout out. And I'm not saying this is the truth from all of my students that I do this with, but look, how many kids that you do you have that are crying out for attention, but there's a reason behind that. And so I think building relationships is the real way to get to that reason, but also Sometimes it's just giving that kid the extra attention. It's just giving them the platform to speak or to get the laugh or whatever. And then communicating to that student, and you know, this is a, maybe in a whole nother video, is that comedy has its time. I tell students all the time, being funny is like wiping your butt. There's a time and a place for it. And so right now might not be the time and the place for it. And that goes really far. It's, and it's hilarious. It's a, it's a little bit of a different shift in how to deal with things. So look, there's a million different ways to kind of deal with this. And maybe this is like a, something I could just make more videos out. Cause I have like literally, I feel like hundreds of ideas for things like this. The bottom line is this, some of these things are going to work and some of them aren't. But when the system is broken, when the system doesn't work, when the system is just a little bit rusty or creaky or not where it should be, then I think some of these tactics can really work. And I'm saying that they can work because they have worked for me before. But look, maybe they don't work for you. Maybe it's just the spirit of this idea. Maybe it's the spirit of thinking a little bit outside of the box. Or what if I had to count on myself? Or what if you know, the SSOs aren't there that day or your security guards aren't there that day or the dean's busy that day or the vice principal's out because his kid's sick. Like on those off days, how am I going to handle some of these things? I think dig deep, think about what you have that you could give, what makes you, you, and how can you use that to your advantage instead of just looking at it like the system is broken and I can't do anything about it. I'm telling you, you can. I think it just comes down to how are you going to tap into your own potential. So look, before you click off, I'd love to know in the comment section below some ways that you are dealing with things. It doesn't have to be funny, it doesn't have to be silly, but it could be. But what ways are you using who you are to handle situations in school? As always, guys, if, if the, anything in this video helped you, inspired you, made you want to make a change, or you think it would help someone else, please consider sharing it with someone. You know, I don't, I make these videos for you. And so like, if you think it might help another teacher out in your district, in your school, in your life, somewhere else in the world, please consider sharing it. Thank you so much as always. Remember to keep teaching your class off. Peace.